Welcome to Crush House Cappers. I'm your host, Wayne Alaroot, the CEO of VegasWinners.com, and the man the media calls the king of Vegas sports gambling and America's odds maker. I'm the only sports handicapper in the world with a 180-pound granite star on the Las Vegas Walk of Stars. And now I'm bringing my Vegas wise guy connections and Vegas insider knowledge to you. This is the show for every type of sports gambler. Male, female, high roller, beginner, $10 better, $10,000 better. We're here to empower anyone and everyone that loves the single most important part about betting, winning. At Crush House Cappers and our sponsor website, VegasWinners.com, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. I want to remind you to go to VegasWinners.com right after this podcast ends for one of my world famous games of the year. Just register, it's simple, it's easy, it takes one minute and you automatically receive $1,000 in free coupons, which you can apply to my game of the year. You also get 5,000 reward points, which can be converted into gifts and prizes with our state-of-the-art cryptocurrency reward system. It's all at VegasWinners.com. Each week here on Crush House Cappers, I bring to you the leading experts in sports handicapping, all of them part of my Vegas Winners elite handicapping team of 21 champions. Joining me today with their points for wisdom, and insights are my friend, Big Al McMorty, the most honored technical handicapper in the country, and Joe D'Amico, a professional sports better that has utilized as many sources in the odds making and sports betting circles to become one of the most respected handicappers in the world. All right, we got Al, we got Joe, you got yours truly, Wayne Al, Root War, and we're going to have some fun. Let's talk about the college game first. Arkansas, Georgia, great game going on in the SEC. Uh, let's open up with Joe D'Amico. What do you think of that game? Well, Wayne, thank you for having me back. I had such a good time the first time. Set your volume on your speakers, folks, as Jody is talking. Starting <laughs> the season at 4-0 is nothing new for the Bulldogs sports fans, but it's the first time since 2003 the Razorbacks have begun a campaign at 4-0. Guys, Georgia's just a field goal away from covering all of their 2021 contests. However, they really haven't faced solid opposition. At the time, their season-opening victory over Clemson was a big thing. But now nearly halfway through the regular season, we see the Tigers... They're just not the same team that we're used to seeing. Arkansas, on the other hand, they went up and have taken down the likes of Texas and Texas A&M and beat both like they stole something, guys. Unlike Bulldogs clubs we've seen in the past, the offense relies primarily on the passing game. JT Daniels has matured nicely. However, his two interceptions stand out far more to me than his five touchdowns. And without a true ground game, this offense becomes one-dimensional. My friends, this doesn't bode well as the Razorbacks own college football's eighth-ranked pass defense. They held the Longhorns to only 118 passing yards, the Aggies to 151 passing yards. Guys, I'm a fan of Kirby Swamp, but Sam Pittman and the Arkansas coaching staff are doing an outstanding job preparing their squads. Some ATS trends real quick that stood out to me. The underdog, 5-1 the last six meetings in the series. Razorbacks, 5-1 the last six on the road. 11-3 11-3 the last 14 as a dog, 10-3 the last 13 in conference play, and 13-3 the last 16 overall. They get the betters paid. This is way too many points, sports fans. I'm taking the dog here plus the 18, and if you do too, we'll both beat our books. They beat them like they stole something. I like, Absolutely, I like, Wayne. I like that. <laughs> Coming from New York, I like that. Big yeah. Al, what's your thought on the game? And I'll bet you won't tell anyone that they beat someone like they stole something. Not your style. <laughs> Well, you know, Joe mentioned about the Georgia offense being a little bit one-dimensional. What about the Arkansas offense? Sam Pittman wants to run the ball 70% of the time. His Razorbacks are averaging uh, 47 rushes a game compared to just 21 passes. And I don't think that sets up very well against a very stiff Georgia rush defense. If you recall, in their first game this season, Georgia held Clemson to just two yards rushing on 23 attempts. For the season, Georgia's giving up just 229 Uh, yards per rush. I think Arkansas is going to have a very difficult time moving the ball on the ground. I think this all sets up very well for a lower scoring game. I like this under the total. The line is 50 in most places, as high as 50 and a half at Circa. And I'm going to take it under the total. All right. So we've got an under and we got plus the points with uh, Arkansas from Joe D'Amico. And now we'll head to the NFL. Cleveland taking on Minnesota. It's at Minnesota. And uh, Cleveland is a one and a half to two point favorite. Let's let Al lead off. Al, where are you going with this game? And let me, let me say one thing. Everyone says the Vikings are one and two, but they lost both their games by a combined four points. So they're five points away from being three and oh. So this could be a very sneaky one and two team with one of the five best quarterbacks in football, Kirk Cousins. He's on a streak. He looks as good as any quarterback in the whole NFL. So with that in play, 
Tell us your pick, Big Al. Well, Wayne, I wouldn't exactly call Kirk Cousins one of the five uh, uh, best quarterbacks in football, notwithstanding how well he's playing this season. But that aside, let's take a look at this ball game. Minnesota did start 0-2. I think a lot of folks, they get it in their heads that this team is bad or this team is good based on the uh, early season play. And I think a lot of people look at these 0-2 teams as bad teams, even though they're not necessarily bad teams. And when these 0-2 teams then win game three, one of the things over the last 42 years is they do very well in game four as an underdog of seven points or less. They're 50 and 21 ATS in that situation. That's the situation here with the Minnesota Vikings as a home dog to Cleveland. Dalvin Cook has expressed that he intends to play on Sunday. I think that's going to be a big deal. And I'm going to take the points with the home underdog Vikings. All right. A uh, little vote of confidence for Minnesota. And by the way, I'll give you my check mark on Minnesota as well. Uh, I think they're going to blow them out. And I think Cleveland's a great team. But I think it's a great spot for Minnesota. Let's see what uh, Joe D'Amico thinks. Well, Wayne, Al, sports fans, my favorite gambling movies are The Gambler, the original version with my old friend Jimmy Kahn, not Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, and Let It Ride with Richard Dreyfus. There's a scene in Let It Ride where Richard Dreyfus goes into the grandstand and asks everybody who they like in the next race. The one horse no one likes, he bets, guess what? He wins. Being a successful longtime contrarian, I'm looking at this matchup because everybody in Vegas is playing Minnesota. I'm going to be a contrarian here, guys. Everybody here in Vegas is playing Minnesota. I'm not going to argue the fact that the Vikings aren't improving because they are. Cousins is hooking up with his arsenal receivers. ATDs and zero INTs. By the way, all you people in Appalachia, don't get too excited. Hooking up with your cousin, it's not what you think. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I couldn't help it, Wayne. Sorry, Al. I couldn't help myself. Dalvin Cook is listed as questionable and should play. But even if he does not, Alexander Madison is an able backup. But I am an old school guy. And to me, a good defense beats a good offense. And the Cleveland Browns defense is very good. Granted, their last few opponents, the Bears and the Texans, aren't the most explosive offense in the league, but Miles Garrett is coming to town, and he will get to the 33-year-old, not so swift to foot, Kirk Cousins, wreak some havoc, create some turnovers offensively. Cleveland, in their second-ranked rushing attack, will keep the mini defense honest, allow Baker Mayfield to open up the passing game. Browns are 5-1 against the number of the last six on the road, 4-1 the last five overall Vikings. 1-4 ATS the last five at home. Two and eight against the spread, the last 10 overall. This is a team that does not cover. He doesn't get the get better pay, guys. I'm playing Cleveland here, folks. It's a winner. I'm going against Wayne and Al, but I'm a contrarian, and I like to do this, that, and I think I'm successful this week. Let's bet dinner on it, guys. And there goes our audience in Appalachia. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the best bet segment of the show. Uh, we'll stick with you, Joe. What's your best bet? I know you love the favorites and the home cooking in the NFL, and you got another one of those great ones for us. You know, when it, during, in, uh, in the beginning of the week when the, when the lines come out, I circle certain, no, certain teams that jump out of me. I do my due diligence. I'll look further into those games. Sometimes it pans out. Sometimes I throw them away. This is something that caught my eye right away, and as I looked into it closely, I really like. Both Pittsburgh and Green Bay are dealing with a laundry list of injuries, guys, but that's where their similarities end, folks. These are two entirely different teams playing two entirely different levels of football, heading in two entirely different directions. Since their season opening loss, Green Bay has shown that they are an NFC elite team. After a season opening outright win, Pittsburgh has dropped two in a row, the two squads they were favored over and on paper should have beaten. The Steelers' offense just can't seem to punch it in the end zone, and they're not going to be able to keep pace with Aaron Rodgers and the high-flying Packers' offense. Something unique this year I have noticed, guys. Green Bay has been adapting their schemes to match up with opposing defenses. Traditionally, they play their offensive scheme and let defenses come to them, but this season they're changing their offensive game plan. They're taking advantage of defenses' weaknesses. Guys, defensively, the Packers can counter Roethlisberger and the Steelers' only offensive threat. Their passing game with a top 10 pass defense. Green Bay gets another win and another cover, while Pittsburgh sinks further into the abyss. This game is going to get uglier than a Kardashian prior to cosmetic surgery, and that's ugly, guys. Uh, Pittsburgh 3 and 7 against the spread, the last 10 overall. Green Bay 5 and 2 against the number, the last 7 as a home faith. Take the pack here, guys, and you're going to take your bookmaker's money. All right. Thank you, Joe. Big Al, your ugly Kardashian special. Do you have one of those? Okay, well, you know, we've been red hot on these podcasts the first few weeks, 4-0. and oh. Hopefully after this show will be 7-0 and oh for my third play here, my best bet. I'm going to look at the matchup between the uh, Rams and the Cardinals. This is a divisional matchup. And in the NFL, a lot of things correlate positively with games being lower scoring. One is divisional matchups. 
Another is high over under lines. When the line's 47 or higher, those games tend to go under more than overs. And then the third thing is that when teams come into a game off three or more overs in a row, which the Rams are, those games correlate positively with going under the total. Both the Rams and the Cardinals are scoring a lot of points this season, both averaging north of 31 points a game. That has caused this line to be inflated as high as 55 and a half points in places. But when you get divisional matchups with high over under lines of 47 or more and one of the two teams playing its previous three games over the total, those games have gone under 108 and 70 dating back to 1980. I'm on the under 55. All right, Rams and Arizona under. You got Green Bay is the best bet, best bet from Joe. Under Rams, Arizona from Big Al. How about the offer? Because I know you got something big going, Jay, today, Joe, at VegasWinners.com. Educate us. My favorite website on the planet, VegasWinners.com. Wayne, 7-2 preseason football. Uh, 3-1 last Saturday, college football. Since the regular season began, 11-3 on big games. Now, guys, I want you to know, last Sunday, hit my first speed bump of the season. I went 0-2. Total transparency here at Vegas Winners. But savor the flavor. As the world champion I am, this Saturday, this Sunday, I have nothing but big game winners. You might even see this early in the month, a game of the month situation, only at Vegas Winners. Follow me this weekend. I promise you by Monday, you'll name your next born Joe D'Amico. <laughs> Joe D'Amico Root. I like it. I love I like it. it. I love it. Has a nice <laughs> ring to it, Wayne. Joe D'Amico McMorty. Al McMorty, what, what's your play this week, your, your big offer at VegasWinners.com? Well, this week, it's a huge week in football for me. Coming off that big win Thursday night on the Jacksonville Jaguars, my Thursday night football game of the month. In September, I cashed my NFL game of the month, my Thursday night football game of the month, my Monday night football game of the month, and my NFC game of the month. Now, as we move into October, I've got my NFC game of the week posted at Vegas Winners, and on Saturday... I've got a huge card, including my very first five-star play of the football season. I don't have many five-stars across all sports, just about 10 a year in baseball, football, basketball, and hockey. But I've got my first in football this season. It goes Saturday. It's my five-star college football conference game of the year. I'm also 30 and 12, my last 42 college football conference games of the year. So a huge week this week in football. I should have about 17 plays. Go to Vegas Winners and get on board right now. All right, and I've got my offer of the week, which is one game very often, usually throughout a football season, I'll find one game a week that reaches the number that I can use that name, Wayne Root Game of the Year, and I've got one this week. So far this season, three of them, perfect 3-0 and in the NFL, not too shabby. Week one in the NFL, 6-2. and two. Week two in the NFL, 5-2. and two. Week three in the NFL, 7-1. and one. And now I started off with a Jacksonville winner, or I should say a Jacksonville cover on Thursday Night Football. That's 19-5. and five. 79% for the season in the NFL, including 3-0 and with NFL best bets. And it's just been a wonderful run. Everything I say is independently documented and monitored by an independent company where you send the picks in before the game starts. So everybody knows everything we do is honesty, integrity, credibility. And so I've got another big game of the year. All I've done going back to last year is win 13 of the last 14 weeks in the NFL. That's 93% winning weeks. It's an unbelievable run. Another game of the year from Wade Root. Head to VegasWinners.com. Thousand dollars in free coupons. Apply them to my big game, Joe's big game, Al's big game. Have a great weekend. Thanks, guys. Win big, baby. Okay, thanks for hanging out with us on Crush House today. I want you to remember you could sign up right now to become a part of the Crush House gang and unlock all of my winning picks only at VegasWinners.com. I want to remind you to go to VegasWinners.com right after this podcast ends for one of my world-famous games of the year. Just register. It's simple. It's easy. It takes one minute, and you automatically receive $1,000 in free coupons, which you can then apply to my game of the year. You also get 5,000 reward points, which can be converted into gifts and prizes with our state-of-the-art cryptocurrency reward system. It's all at VegasWinners.com. What else is waiting for you at Vegas Winners? Check out all our entertaining and informative Crush House Podcasts. Enter to win fabulous prizes, including trips to Vegas, to join me and the Crush House gang to watch a game, break some bread, and experience Sin City like few ever will. And most importantly, it's always about my favorite thing, winning and winning big. And of course, there's the point spread winners. We've got free winners every day, plus best bets from our team of 21 champions, the greatest lineup ever assembled, 
All you have to do is take one minute to register. Just go to VegasWinners.com right now. Follow the prompts to register, and you automatically get the picks, the wisdom, the analysis, and the winning point spread advice, plus rewards points for every click. It's all there. A big thank you to Big Al and Joe for dropping in. Smart guys. Thanks for your point spread wisdom and insights. If you like what you saw or heard, come back and tune in to Crush House Cappers every week only on the Crush House Network, which includes Crush House and Crush House Legends, this week with Warren Moon. Thank you for stopping into another episode of Crush House Cappers, because winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. Until next time, just beat the point spread, baby.